Hey guys, I was here playing with my cameras Lord help me, what? and I thought I'd bring you along. Today we're going to do something fun. We're actually going to dive deep, very deep into the Fujifilm camera and a couple of other cameras surface because I've seen a couple of people say that when they opened up the Fujifilm X-T5, they thought it looked a little cheap. And I think I know what it is. It's something on the surface. Now to help us out with that, today we're using the Google Pixel 7 Pro, which has an awesome, super close up macro camera, which we get to play with as well. Uh, thank you, Google, part of Team Pixel. They send us phones to play with, and this is a pretty awesome phone. They sent it in a super nice package to open up. I love taking pictures with this phone, but I love more than anything this little macro camera. So I want to show you guys that as well. So let's start with looking at an old school Fujifilm X-T2. And on the surface, so let me show you, let me show you here. Here is the Fujifilm X-T2. And if you can see right above the Fujifilm, there's a little bit of surface there. You see that surface texture? So nice. And from the top, this is what the Fujifilm X-T2 looks like. By the way, I apologize for any non-pedicure having fiascos. <laughs> uh, but this is what the Fujifilm X-T2 looks like on the top. Now, I'm going to show you the X-T5. Do you see how smooth it is, guys? It's like super smooth. And I think we associate that smoothness with sort of like plasticky and cheapness. So I think one technique with the paint is to put a little texture on it so maybe we have a little tactile experience where we feel that the camera has a little bit more quality to it, but the camera is on the surface pretty smooth. The paint job is smooth. Let me show you the X-T3 so you can see the difference there. Oh my God, look at the dust. <laughs> I never cleaned that crevice there. Thank you, Google Pixel 7. Um, yeah, I gotta examine all my cameras now with the Pixel. So here, oh, sorry, let me show you the top. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. This is the uh, X-T3, and they did away with some of the texture compared to the X-T2. So I'll go side, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um, here's the X-T2. See that little surface there and very thin in the front. X-T3 was a little fatter, less texture. X-T5, for those of you that care about this stuff, about surfaces of your camera, I bring you quality content here. <laughs> uh, cool, cool, cool. So that's the first thing I noticed. You can also see it very dramatically on the bottom of the camera. So check it out. Here is the X-T2 again. And if we look, you can see this is the battery grip area that no longer exists. But there's the texture right by the tripod plate. And the X-T5 is just a bit smoother there. Pretty smooth and no little battery grip plate. Just for fun, the Fujifilm Noir here. Fujifilm Noir is dusty as heck. Very dusty. I got to get out and shoot more. Weather's been bad. That's my excuse. Uh, but yeah, this has texture as well, as you can see, and a bunch of dust. Oh man, this is not a good <laughs> product review here. The other thing that differs with the cameras is their leatheretness. Um, let me show you the, first of all, before we do the leatheretness, um, let me show you the surface of some of the other cameras I have. So let's go back to the Pixels Wide. I'm using the Pixel Wide camera here. And that allows you to get really close up. And so this is the, um, the Nikon Z6 II surface, and it has some kind of little cool pattern going there. A little leoparding. has a little leoparding. You could see it here as well on the side. A little leoparding. And the Sony a7 III also has 
a little bit of texture. So it seems it's like a technique to sort of give any kind of hard plastics a texture of some kind so we don't feel the cheapness. Notice I got my glasses on because I can't even see this close, but <laughs> here's the Fujifilm X-E2, by the way. And the X-E2, uh, let's see what the X-E2 is. It's got a nice little texture to it, slight texture to it there. Uh, but one thing I want to talk about is the leatheretness. This leather, look, made in Japan, so nice. Um, some of these are more grippy than others. So, for example, the, the, um, the Nikon Z6II's leatherette, it has the best feel in the hand. It's, it's very, there's a lot of friction on this material. And so when you pick it up, it doesn't feel so slippery. So it feels good in the hand. Um, the a7 IV has less of a nice leatherette. And I think that is something also we associate with quality. If you pick up the camera and you feel that sort of, it feels almost like a leather glove grip. And I will say that as the cameras get a little bit more, you know, lower in production costs and they're outsourcing them to other countries to make, that the materials are also, although this Fujifilm X-T20 was made in China and it has the rubbery grip. It could also be from use that, you know, this camera I've used so much that, no, but that doesn't make sense because over here by the focus switch, which I never touch, is very grippy. So the X-T20 is very grippy. The X-T5, not as sticky. X-T3, not as sticky. And yeah, I would say the X-T, no, the X-T5 is pretty grippy. And you know what? Feeling them now, the X-T5 actually has the most rubbery grip to it. That's pretty nice to know. X-T3, sorry, X-T2 does not. And the X-T3, not as much. So the X-T5 has, they added extra rubber on there. <laughs> it has definitely a better stick to the hands, okay? Now, taking a super closer Pixel 7 Pro look at the surfaces, here's the X-T2. You see the leatherette there. Um, and although it has more texture, here's the X-T5. Does it have more texture? Look at me, let me think about that. Are they the same? Are they the same? Let's look at them side by side here. Okay, looking at the leatherette here, uh, here's the X-T3. This is the, just so you know I'm not lying, here's the X-T3. Um, there's the bumpage on the leatherettness. And here is the X-T5. It looks pretty similar. They look like they kind of have the same amount of bumpage. I would say the X-T3 maybe is a little bit more textured. Let's put them side by side here. Jump from island to island. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Did you see anything? No, sir. I didn't see you playing with your dolls again. Good. It wouldn't make such a big difference, except that the X-T5, because of IBIS, is thicker this way. It's kind of like the X-T4. So when you're looking down at the X-T2 around your neck, you barely see anything on the top of the surface, you see? But when you look at the X-T5, this is almost like a landing strip here. You see how big that is? And so that also, design-wise, without any texture or anything on here, you know, it gives it kind of like, I don't want to say a cheap look, but I kind of like the look of the streamlined X-T2 a little bit more. You know, after using the X-T5 for a little while, the one thing that is the biggest difference is the size of the buttons. The, let me show you with the macro view, of course. Let me show you this back button focus button, which is amazing. Did I say button enough times? Here we go, recording. Here is the um, X-T5's back button focus there, you see that? Nice, round. And after you use that for a while, you kind of forget how small the AF on buttons were <laughs> on the X-T2. Like the X-T2, it's very flush. It's kind of hard to find. So that is a definite welcome change. Something that has changed is the sound of the exposure compensation dial. I really like the metallic sort of sound of the X-T2s. 
Listen. And the X-T3. But the X-T5 they made a little quieter, listen. Besides the compensation dial, the other dials to me don't feel too, they feel a little less stiff. Like they're easy, maybe easier to bump. They're a little harder to turn on the X-T2 here. I just think they made them a little easier to turn. They don't feel cheap or anything to me. Nothing on the camera feels cheap to me. Um, but there was definitely something off. And I think the thing that was off in my mind was the surface. The camera seemed too clean and too shiny. And I think thanks to the Google Pixel 7 Pro, we were able to find out what it was. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if that'll help you with your buying decision, the surface area of the camera, but whatever. It was fun. All right, I'll see you guys next time.